Hello viewers, hope you are all well. Before I begin, I would request all my viewers to check the description box of this video. Thank you. Let's start with test number 8, question number 1. David is a project manager working in a company who makes cooking oil. The project in which David and his team will work is about to start and being an experienced project manager, David knows that for a successful project execution, the project team should define and adhere to team agreement, essentially the working norms and behavioral parameters of a team. Which of the following statements is true regarding the team agreements? A. Team agreement is typically created at the beginning of the project and will be created by the project manager and should be upheld through and should be upheld through individual and team commitment. B. Team agreement is typically created at the beginning of the project and will be created by the project team and should be upheld through individual and team commitment. C. Team agreement is typically created at the beginning of the project and will be created by the project team and should be upheld by the project manager. D. Team agreement is typically created at the beginning of the project and will be created by the project sponsor and should be upheld through individual and team commitment. Here option B is correct. Here option B is correct. Team agreements represent a set of behaviors and working norms established by the project team for itself. Team agreements are a set of conventions that the project team plans to abide by. Therefore, it makes sense to create these team agreements at the beginning of the project. They will be created by the project team because they will eventually have to adhere to them. And these agreements should be upheld through individual and team commitments for the project to be successful. Question number two, due to expected frequent changes, the leadership at Global Sports Inc. has decided to use the adaptive approach to the delivery of the new project. This project will have a business analyst and project team to work on a daily basis together. You are working as a project manager and wanted to use adaptive planning for this project. Which of the below statements correctly describe the characteristics of adaptive planning? A. Adaptive planning defines a plan but acknowledges that once the project work starts, the priorities may change and the plan needs to reflect this new knowledge. B. Adaptive planning doesn't define any plan upfront but acknowledges that once the project work starts, the priorities may change and the plan needs to reflect this new knowledge. C. Adaptive planning defines a plan but acknowledges that once the project work starts, the priorities will not change. D. Adaptive planning defines a plan but acknowledges that once the project work starts, the priorities may change and the plan need not have to reflect this new knowledge. Here option A is correct. Defining a long term scope can be challenging. Given the high level of uncertainty in a fast paced, highly competitive marketplace, high uncertainty projects are characterized by high rates of change, complexity and risk. These characteristics can pose problems for traditional predictive approaches that seek to establish most of the requirements upfront and manage changes through a change request process. Instead, agile approaches were developed to explore feasibility in short cycles and quick adapt based on evaluation and feedback. The use of adaptive planning is the right approach for such projects where there is a high level of uncertainty in a fast paced highly competitive marketplace. In adaptive planning, the team defines the plan based on their current understanding of the requirements but also acknowledges that once the project work begins, priorities may change and in an agile context, they often do and the plan needs to reflect the new knowledge. Question number three, your project sponsor has asked you to come up with a way by which benefits are identified for the new digital clock project on which your team is working. This project is much awaited because the success of this project would mean an entry and expansion into the Asia Pacific region and hence the leadership is keen on ensuring that you as a project manager are identifying the benefits and also having a measurement system in place to track benefits. 
which one of the below should you use or prepare to satisfy the project sponsor's requirement a project business case b project benefit management plan c value stream analysis d project charter here option b is correct a project is a means to deliver benefits to all of its stakeholders these benefits include improved quality, reduced production costs, better customer service, increased customer retention, and so on. Identifying, describing, and measuring these project benefits is called benefits management. Having a project benefits management plan allows project managers to maximize these outcomes for the organization and stakeholders. So, you should prepare a benefits management plan and ensure that benefits are identified and measurement systems are in place to track benefits. Question number 4. Smith is a project manager who works in a Dubai-based civil and construction company. Smith's company is going to start work soon on the development of a new community center in Dubai. This will be the second community center project on which this company is going to work and the historical data, lessons learned and other project information from the previous project is already archived and is available in the company's information system. The overall scope and requirements of this new project are fairly stable and are not expected to be changed in future. Smith has to decide the project management approach for this project. Which of the below are the most suitable choices? You have to select two choices from below. A. Scrum ban approach, B. Waterfall approach, C. Predictive approach, D. Adaptive approach. Here, option B and C are correct. The predictive approach, also known as the waterfall approach, relies on early phase analysis and a detailed breakdown of features and tasks for the entire development process. In this traditional approach, the project team can define standard timelines to complete project work and dependencies between those project tasks as per the planned schedule. The predictive approach is one of the best methods for projects that have regular standards and no scope for change. The predictive method doesn't accommodate flexibility in development and is ideal for the projects that have been fully explored at the conceptual level and now only need to be implemented correctly with high performance. Since Smith's company has already worked on previous similar projects and this project will be the second community center project on which this company is going to work, the predictive approach also known as the waterfall approach is the most suitable development approach. Question number 5. For the upcoming Olympics, an organization is working on a parking ticket booking application for the stadium which are associated with the Olympics. Since the timelines for the Olympics is fixed, there is a pressure on the development team to meet the timelines. What can go wrong if the team tries to meet the schedule objectives by rushing planned quality inspection? A. Undetected errors may be there in the project. B. The post-implementation risks associated with the project will be increased. C. The decreased profit for a performing organization. D. All of the above. Here, option D is correct. The question pertains to the quality management aspect of a project. As a project manager, you should be familiar with the quality requirements of a project and understand the potential impact if those quality requirements are not met. Typically, when there is scheduled pressure to deliver a project by fixed dates, teams tend to expedite the planned quality inspections. This can result in several issues in a project such as undetected errors may be left in the project which can lead to a very negative user experience when the project is eventually handed over to users. Second issue can be the post implementation risk associated with the project will increase due to inadequate quality inspections. The project may naturally have numerous issues and defects that will surface after deployment. Consequently, the project will require significant post-deployment repair works. Thirdly, decreased profit for the performing organization may occur. Poor quality can result in increased efforts being spent on rework and re-verification. This may lead to the project's resources being allocated for a longer duration than initially planned, ultimately reducing the organization's profit. Also note that rushing planned quality inspections does not cause the project scope to expand.
Question number six, that organization in which John currently works as a project manager is seeing a high attrition rate, which is going over 35% since the last three quarters. The organization leadership team is worried due to this high attrition of employees leaving the organization. The worry for John is most of the attrition is happening in his project team and he has been asked by the HR and organization leadership team to implement steps to reduce this attrition to an acceptable level, ideally below 15%. Which of the following options should John try? A. John should clarify the role and responsibility of each team member and provide them an adequate training if there are any gaps in their skills. This will ensure team members are satisfied with their work and this will reduce the attrition. B. John should use osmotic communication and collaborate with each team member and clearly explain this, the project goals and objectives. This will ensure team members participate actively in project work and this will reduce the attrition. C. John should find ways to understand what motivates the team members and then reward them for the good work to keep team members satisfied. This will ensure team members are satisfied with their work and this will reduce the attrition. D. John should create an open and safe working project environment and should clearly explain the project goals and objectives. This will ensure team members participate actively in project work and this will reduce the attrition. Here, option C is correct. If you consider yourself an employee, think about which of the choices mentioned in the question will make you stay with an existing organization. Do you think it is always possible to have motivated people on the project? No, not at all. It is the project manager's responsibility and accountability to keep the project team fully motivated towards project objectives. Now, how to do it? Well, Try to introduce a reward and recognition system for each performer. Introduce a reward and recognition system that is highly achievable. It should not be so difficult that no one can attain it. Question number seven. The PMO established by a firm in Germany whose goal is to standardize the project management best practices and also to ensure the right role and responsibilities are assigned to the right skilled people in the firm. Which of the following is the correct combination of role versus responsibility? A. Project charter is created by project sponsor or by the project manager in collaboration with the project initiating entity and project management plans are to be created by the project manager. B. Project charter is created by the project sponsor and project management plans are to be created by the project sponsor. C. Project Charter is created by the project manager and project management plans are to be created by the project sponsor. D. Project Charter is created by the project sponsor and project management plans are to be created by the project manager. Here, option A is correct. This is one of those topics that may slightly vary from organization to organization because not every organization follows what is written in the PM book guide. So if you have got this answer wrong, it may be because your organization may not be following what is mentioned in the PM book guide. However, for the PMP exam, it is advised to follow the principles and guidelines that are mentioned in the PM book guide. According to the PM book guide, the project charter is created by the project sponsor or by the project manager in collaboration with the project initiating entity and project management plans are to be created by the project manager. Question number eight. Blue Valley Inc. Corporation's team is using Scrum methodology and their Scrum team is working on the final sprint of their product. The sprint is well planned and the whole team is occupied with their tasks and there is not much capacity available. During one of the daily stand-up calls, the product owner said he received a message from a marketing executive that adding one month feature will be beneficial for the overall product's acceptance to its user base and give an edge to it compared to its competitors. What should the team do now? A. Accept the change, get it into the product backlog and start the work on it right away in the same sprint as this is the last sprint. B. Accept the change, get it into the product backlog but first finish the current sprint as planned earlier and then add one more sprint to complete it. C. Reject the change as this is final sprint and by now team had already delivered the other prioritized user stories. D. Reject the change as it is coming from non-scrum team member. Here, option B is the correct choice. 
Rejecting changes that can provide a competitive advantage even late in development goes against agile principles. Therefore, option A and C are both incorrect. Option D is also incorrect because the scenario clearly mentions that the team is occupied with their tasks and there is not much capacity available. Adding the new work which is not even estimated yet will force the team to work overtime which is not desirable. Hence, the only logical choice is to accept the change added to the product backlog but first finish the current sprint as originally planned and then add one more sprint to complete it. Question number 9. Since the total scope of upcoming artificial intelligence software is unclear, Sara, who is a skilled project manager with experience in both agile and waterfall projects and her team decided to use a rolling wave planning approach to their project. Which of the following correctly describe the rolling wave planning approach which this team should use? A. The project team should plan both near term work and work which is far from now with high level only. B. The project team should plan near term work at a high level and work which is far from now is to be planned in detail. C. The project team should plan both near term work and work which is far from now with full details only. D. The project team should plan near term work in detail and work which is far from now is planned at a high level. Here option D is correct. Rolling wave planning is the process of project planning in waves as the project proceeds and later details become clearer. This is typically used when there is not enough information to create a complete schedule upfront as was the case in the above scenario. It is stated in the scenario that the total scope of upcoming artificial intelligence software is unclear. So the team cannot plan the work that is far from now with full details. Instead, the team can plan near term work in detail because things are much clearer and work that is far from now can be planned at a high level only. Question number 10. Alex is a new project manager who joined the Munich office of one of the most reputed German banks. Since he is new and still learning the details of the project after joining, he decided to take a look at stakeholders of this project. He came to know that the stakeholder register seems to be containing the names of the people who have left the project already. Also, the stakeholder register contains more than 1000 stakeholder names and their details. Is this project done right in regards with their stakeholder engagement approach? Select whatever applicable from below. At least select two choices. A. Yes, there may be different stakeholders in different phases of the project and hence the stakeholder register have mention of the names of the people who have left the project. B. Yes, having more than 1000 stakeholder names and their details is ok as project can have small group of stakeholders or potentially millions of stakeholders. C. No project don't need to worry about the stakeholders who left the project from previous phase. D. No project don't need to track more than few handful stakeholders. Here option A and B are correct. It may be true that as a project manager you don't have to engage with those stakeholders who have already left the project. However, there may be different stakeholders in different phases of the project and therefore the stakeholder register should mention the names of people who have left the project but were once part of it. Additionally, a project can have a small group of stakeholders or potentially millions of stakeholders. Of course, as a project manager you need to identify the power and influence of these stakeholders and based on that design your stakeholder engagement approach. Viewers, if you find value in this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell icon. Thank you.